Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today we're going to have a short story about nitroglycerin, dynamite, and how they led to the creation of the Nobel Prize. Now today we're going to meet two influential European chemists who both worked in the mid-1800s. One of these men devised a way to make one of the most powerful explosives of his day, and the other found a way to make a marketable product. So let's begin with the first of our two famous chemists from the story, Ascanio Sobrero. Sobrero was an Italian chemist who discovered that by mixing glycerin, a byproduct of the soap making process, with nitric acid, he could produce a compound known as nitroglycerin, a very powerful but highly unstable explosive prone to accidental detonation. Nitroglycerin is produced by what's known as a condensation reaction in which three molecules of nitric acid react with one molecule of glycerin to form three molecules of water and one molecule of the trinitrate ester, nitroglycerin. Sobrero himself was famously opposed to the commercialization and use of his invention, having been quoted as saying, when I think of all the victims killed during nitroglycerin explosions, I'm almost ashamed to admit to be its discoverer. So Sobrero was adamantly opposed to the use of nitroglycerin. But there's another chemist in our story, a Swedish chemist and the son of an explosives manufacturer. His name was Alfred Nobel. Nobel was raised in the entrepreneurial spirit of his father, and where Sobrero saw only danger, Nobel saw opportunity. Nobel took Sobrero's nitroglycerin and his business savvy and mixed the two together, finding a way to stabilize the compound using sawdust and the salts of nitrates. This allowed Nobel to package nitroglycerin into sticks that are commonly known as dynamite. Nobel then invented methods for detonating, storing, and transporting his new product, all of which made Nobel an extraordinarily wealthy man. But there are some indications that Nobel did suffer from some moral conflict over the deadly nature of his most lucrative invention. And many believe it was this guilt that, at least in part, motivated him very late in his life to use his massive fortune to endow the Nobel Prize. A prize intended to honor those whose work has conferred the greatest benefit to all mankind. This seems to be a clear attempt for Nobel to rectify his legacy as having contributed something positive to society, rather than having been the merchant of death. That's all for now, everyone. I'm Professor Davis, ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you on the next video.